Hello everybody, welcome to this week's episode. It's been a while since you've seen my face on the camera. We've been getting some comments wondering where I am, so I am back. And you guys, I think, know Mike Reese by now. Mike is the general manager here at Seawind and he is going to take us on a little walk through today, give us some updates, tell us what's been happening and just kind of have a little walk through the factory and discuss what we can see. All right, Mike, what have we got? This is the first of the trifold door bulkheads. It's obviously on its back, but we're basically in the cockpit position with the door opening up and going that way. But you can see how we've got all of the helm position in on both sides with the electric windows. And then we've got a helm molding that's actually gonna come down and, and sit down on the top of this. So the helm comes out like that, going down. And we've got, so you've got your steering pedestal. And, and, and what's this then? This is access to the electric motor for the uh, electric window there. So as you're at the helm, you've got an electric motor going up and down. Yep. And we're able to access the parts there for servicing. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, so quite a structural component. A lot of reinforcement around the top. Obviously, there's a big opening in the boat. You know, it's a full trifold door, so. Okay. And the trifold doors also, we're, we've developed a little bit from our, from our previous models. So we're really trying to get the weight down because they're a taller door. So we're getting it nice and light because you're typically bringing it up on a winch or, yeah. or electric winch I suppose but just getting them lighter is, is our goal which yep. we're achieving so awesome and so is this all ready to be fit to hull one yeah so this will go in this will get bonded into hull one there's a sequence we're waiting for our target arch molding to be finished yep we can then put the roof on and then we can bond this in as well yep yeah great okay yeah this is the cockpit roof it's a made part which we've then put into a framework because we're about to do the plug work well this is going to form the base of the plug to then do the liner so when you're sanding in the cockpit on the underside you'll have a fiberglass oh, liner okay and in order to do that we need to make it into the, the part so yes. on here we will then start making up a, a plug in the back half where the cockpit is and we need to have it in this structure to make sure it stays exactly true to its original shape. Yep. We'll put in a plug, we'll then make a mold off that. Yeah. And then we can then start taking our parts from the mold. So th this is an actual coach roof. This here. is a coach roof, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we've actually got a few coach roofs here. We've yep. got a finished part over there. Yep. And then we've got another one in the mold over here. Yep. So far we've got carbon coach roofs coming yeah. through for the first five boats, I think. So. I'm going to ask you the question that everyone is going to ask in the comments, so I'm just yeah. preempting. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yet the weight saving carbon? Well, we haven't made an e-glass one. I know, everybody, I didn't even uh, say that. Everybody wanted to yeah. see things. I think we're about sort of 80 kilos, I think was what we were trying to save, but I'd need to okay. check on our stats. So ballpark yeah. about that, but, okay. But yeah, I mean, as high up on the structure of the vessel, it's weight saving, so it does make sense. Yeah. But in terms of the actual aesthetics, they're going to be identical. Yeah. They're all the grey gel coat. Yeah. Sweet. Where to next, Mike? What else can we have a look well, at? We can go and we've got the deck going here yeah. and, and we've is, got... Um, this is our oh, deck, right? That's your deck. Yeah, indeed. that's exciting. Yeah. We had some finishing that we had to do on the deck mould, so we're a bit behind in decks than we are for hulls. But basically, you can see here, we're just doing the loading process. So you can see you've got the white gel coat and then the tie layer where we put yep. down the the outer skin and then we've got, or the, sorry, the tie layer, which is sort of creates the eggshell that the guys can then work on. And then they've got the laminates going down. So here, for example, if you just have a look at this, you've got a whole series of unidirectional glass. So there's all, all types of different glass that we're using, but you can see you've got unidirectional e-glass here. And then equally, you've got unidirectional carbon as well. And what's um, the point of the carbon in the deck? You've got various different points that have got much higher load. Yeah. So the most obvious one is where the mast goes, right? So where the mast is sitting on the deck, it's constantly trying to press down. Yeah. And therefore we want to have a really strong structure because you've got a bulkhead underneath it. And we want to have basically an I-beam is what we're trying to form on either on the top and the bottom of that bulkhead. Yeah. So across that I-beam, we run unis like this to spread that load right the way across the yep. deck. So the carbon unis are far, far stronger than say the e-glass. This is a very approximate comparison. You can use one carbon uni to three e-glass. Okay. Yeah? Now obviously the cost is substantially more. For this boat, we have a, a real mix of e-glass and carbon. And we generally go to carbon where we've got a structural area to try and yep. keep the weight down and really get the strength high. But for your general you know, your flat surfaces and your fairly basic laminates, we're using e-glass yep. being a production boat builder. Yep, yep. I'll just quickly say, guys, that we did make an episode, which was a very thorough walkthrough of the deck. And we talked, I think it was to Danny, about the difference between the carbon and the fiberglass parts of that deck. So if you want to watch it, then I'll link to it up here. 
But you can see here, I mean, they've got some of the carbon in the back here already yeah. down. And you can see on this one, it's actually the carbon unis are going down in line with, these are your jammers. So you've yeah. got quite a bit of load going through your jammers going in the rope box. So yeah. all those unis here, and then you've got your chain plates that are going down towards the mast. When you actually have all the unis, you can map out all of the load paths on the deck when you're looking in sort of plan view. What next? So this is um, another coach So this roof. is another coach roof. Yeah, that's yep. the cockpit roof. And this yep. one's in the mold, been infused, just getting ready. We put these tabs on just to demold it, but that's okay. basically ready to go. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go through to the hull. Yeah. Sorry about the alarm in the background, guys. <laughs> All right, so we're just standing next to our boat, hull two. We can hear some machinery in the background, so apologies for the background noise. Mike, what? Yeah, so happened? we were just down at the hull five. Yep. And then we've got four and three here, two, your boat. So we're just working through the process. We've just done things like putting in your life raft mounts. Yeah. Got sideliners going inside the boat. We've got some early plumbing work. I think you've just had your gory props go on, you've oh, okay. got some engines in, you've got some basic engine engineering plumbing happening. Yeah, and just working our way through the liner. Equally, we're working on uh, boat one at the moment where we've got more of the team sort of just trying to get this coat roof sorted out. And further along, we're trying to get this targa arch in place and working through the, some of the joinery stuff now. So, yep. Yep. so working on all boats, so sort of you've got the main bulk of the team at the front and then yeah. it sort of peters down to just a few guys doing some basic uh, composite work there, but it's all progressing. Yeah. Great. Shall we have a look at hole one and see what's happened more yeah, recently? Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's okay. go and have a look at hole one. Okay, yeah. Mike, what do we got here? As you can see, we've got the coach roof on. We've just got a temporary targa arch in place at the moment, just to represent the right size and shape. That's a really complicated part to mould because right. you've got release angles this way, you've got curvature that way, so it's actually like a multi part mould. The mould is still being produced at the moment Okay, for that. and is this going to be similar to the target arches on your other models? Yeah, very similar concept, yeah. but just a slightly different shape. Yeah. But it's much wider, a bit squarer, a bit more modern design. But in principle, yeah, same same, same job. Yep. The difference is on those ones, on the, on the smaller boats, the targa arch, we run the cockpit roof to the targa arch and then we've just got stainless yeah. on the back edge. Yeah. Whereas this is actually running right the way over the top. So yep. we've got the structure of the arch needing to handle the main sheet track. Yep. We've got this roof going over the top of that. So yep. the structure has to tie in through. So it's a slightly different uh, concept, but, yep. but aesthetically it'll be pretty similar. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. But All I right. mean, things to note, I'm 173 centimetres. I can't quite reach the roof here. Now we'll have, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have liners and stringers and things, but okay. as I say, if you're six foot eight, yeah. then you're not going to have a problem through here. I'm still on gel coat, so there's nothing coming nope. up from here, so yeah, yeah, yeah. there's plenty of plenty. So of do we know here. what the head height is going to be here? Specifically, there's a drawing that I can give you guys, but but there's going to be you know you have a handrail, but I'm not sure whether you'll be able to reach the handrail Aww. to do so. so. It'd be like me on like a bus like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, have to get some of those London Underground yeah, hanging things. Yeah, that's right. And I can't reach those. It's really awkward. Yeah. I have to go like this. We'll probably be putting in a handrail here, I imagine. That once we work that out and we work out where we need it, but on our 1260s, we certainly have a handrail here. Yeah. And, you know, when you're on the helm sometimes it makes sense or if you're just looking through the windows or you know you're more it makes vertically sense. challenged like exactly. i am and you can't reach the handrails <laughs> exactly. yeah there's a lot of sort of questions about where all the handrails go for us it's you've got to work out get the boat sorted out and then you actually just work it out on the boat so okay yeah. this is the right spot and it's easy for us to put that in okay so again we just got a temporary bulkhead here at the moment. Yep. We saw it on the floor yep. of what the real bulkhead is. So that'll all get bonded in and bonded around through the top and glass in also. Yep. Yeah, yep. Okay, great. Anything then, else in here? Yeah, so this is just a temporary counter at the moment. We've just got temporary mock-ups, just checking the dimensions. The important thing is just making sure that space is the right space that you can yeah. fit in between and brace yourself if you're in bad weather, and then, but also equally still operate oven and get the drawers and stuff. So we've just got mock-ups in here at the moment. The yep. real joinery is underway yep. with the team at the main shed. Okay. Yeah. We had a question about the side deck width, didn't yeah. we? So just looking at that now, so, I mean, that's 800, so 860. Okay. 34 inches. I mean, I think that like wide. having the perspective of us standing here, like it's very wide. It is wide, yeah. yeah. I mean, you are going to have, you've got your cap shroud coming up here. So you will have a, a shroud coming through here. The other thing is you have got this uh, drain rail here, which gives you a bit of grip to hold on to. 
and then we'll be having a handrail up here. Oh, I so. see. Okay. But you've got this where the water's channeled to come down here. You've actually got a reasonable grip there. Yeah. Yeah. But really, if you're walking up the side deck, it's along here that you need something to actually. That's come right. Up. Yeah. yeah. So you'll have your cap shroud here that you'll hold yeah. onto, and then you'll we'll be putting a handrail up here yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. What about access to the coach roof? Are there going to be like little steps? Yeah, so the access to the coach roof, we spent a lot of time walking up and down stairs. So you've got. <laughs> So you've got the top step here, yeah. and then we've got two more steps oh, okay. on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. And what are you going to hold on to, the cap shrouds? Well, no, the cap shrouds slightly further away. Yeah. It's, it was actually a bit of a challenge for us in doing this. In reasonable weather, you will be able to just go straight up the steps. We've actually got a stanchion that comes up that you can bring up to hold on to. It comes up and then goes into a socket. So if you're in rough weather, you'll bring it up, and then you can then hold on to it to go up the step. OK. Yeah. All right because the uh, mast well is too, too tight to put steps in around the side without having to close out the front opening window because we really want that really nice and wide. Yeah. Because as soon as you start closing it out, you start getting vision impairment because our helm position is that you look through the boat. Yes. So as soon as you start putting all sorts of steps in the way, then, yeah. you, then you lose vision. So for us, it is more important to keep that vision open and we've got a corner step here. So while we're standing here, can you talk us through the rain capture system? Yeah, sure. So you can see, I mean, it's a, it's a huge surface area. Yeah. There's a little notch on the top there, which is where the trifold oh, door yeah. rope comes up. Yep. Everything forward of that will drain forward. If the boat's sitting on its water lines, it'll run forward. Even if it is slightly trimmed though, there's still a lot of fall, yeah. certainly this front section. You've got a ridge here. Anything in the center will come forward. It'll then come down into this channel here and we're running down. Okay into this mast recess. So yep. mast is based here, obviously. And then down at the bottom of this, we've got a drain to go straight down, and then we've got a drain to go into the tank. Yeah. Yeah. OK, great. So obviously, when you've got that rain, as I said before, you're cleaning everything. It's just filtering down, going through. And then when it's overflowing, though, you've got water coming out the sides here. and Okay. Sorry, there's a big surface area, so yeah. there'll be times where you can't get all that water into the tank or yeah. even through that drain there, yeah. in which case it'll just overflow out the side deck. Okay. What else can we see here that we haven't talked about? Yeah, so just general production. There's always gel coat repairs to do on a boat, it's just never ending. <laughs> but the guys are just tidying up gel coat repairs where they're just tidying up the edge of the non-skid. They've got deck hatches that have got on, you've got your, your windlass which is already in the boat. Yep. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so down here you've got your Muir windlass. A bit better. Nice. So running through, obviously, you've got your attachment point there. So that goes right the way through. When you can see here the size of these lockers, right? Oh, they're huge. So this opening here is 690, 27 inches. Inside, 47 inches. For 119 centimetres or 1190. So, so huge space. And then lengthwise, it just goes forever. Oh, wow. It's a bit bit loose, but you're talking about something like 2.3 metres. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's huge. And there's not, there's not going to be a divider? There's a divider, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah but heaps of space. Yeah. So, in here, I mean, in terms of like, you know, putting spinnakers and screeches yeah. and stuff, a lot of space, space. Definitely. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So handy. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. A huge thank you to Mike for giving up some time to uh, take us through the build updates today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like this kind of content and give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment. We'll see you next week.